playing games with God. When we enter sometimes into the sacrament of reconciliation, or when we're coming to the Lord, apologizing for our sinfulness or for messing up, sometimes we say, well, I'm probably going to be going back two months later or next week with the exact same thing. And I just know yet God will probably forgive me. Sometimes we can just get used to, well, that's just my sin. We get so comfortable with it, we presume that, yeah, I'll come back a year later. I'm not going to do much to change it, but I'm going to confess the same thing. That's kind of playing games with God. We're presuming the mercy of God. When we enter into the sacrament of reconciliation, we come to the Lord asking for mercy for our own sinfulness. We're asking that so we can move forward and actually transform and change our lives. There needs to be evidence that we want to change. We just can't just slow. Well, I'm just going to go to confession and get the sticker, and then I'm going to go back again and not change my life. That's not what this is about. John the Baptist, we hear about today as we are in this Advent season, and he speaks directly to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. These are the most biggest hypocrites in that society, and they wanted to come to him for this baptism of repentance. But he calls them out. He says, no, it isn't just about this baptism of water. There needs to be evidence of your repentance. There needs to be good fruit that you produce in your lives. And if you're not going to be doing that, if you're not leaving any sort of legacy of good fruit or of evidence of your repentance, then what are you doing? Same thing for all of us. If we're just coming to the Lord and saying, well, I'm sorry for being a sinner and not making any effort to become holy and blameless in His sight by producing a legacy of good fruit, then what are we doing? Faith is not a sticker that we receive. We know the Eucharist isn't just your ticket to say, hey, I went to church on Sunday. No, it's our responsibility that we go out and we try to live holy lives and leave that legacy of good fruit. Now, at the end of our lives, it's going to happen for each and every one of us. And I think, you know, when I'm rolled into a church in a box and somebody is up there speaking about me, what are they going to say? Are they just going to do the superficial thing and say, okay, Mike liked chocolate chip cookies and, you know, he liked certain TV shows? I mean, I hope that it can go a little bit deeper than that of a legacy of good fruit. We all think about that. Doug, as he was received into the church today, as he becomes a kind of human, takes that responsibility on his shoulders that he is desiring to be a Christian. He is desiring to be Catholic and be a living symbol. A living reality that he indeed is living the gospel by training his family, his daughters, and his son in the way of faith, by living as a Christian disciple in this world and producing that good fruit. So hopefully by leading people to pray, belief in God, to trust, to live a life that is totally upright, leading people to sharing leading people to volunteer work, leading people to giving up on themselves for the mission of the gospel in service. That is the legacy that hopefully God, by making this step into the Christian faith, is making that dedication, saying, this is what I want to do. The legacy that we leave hopefully isn't just, well, my dollar, my, my bank account, or whatever job I have. Hopefully it's leading people into discipleship in love. So we gather here on the second Sunday of Advent, and we open our hearts, we take that time of quiet time to see what the Lord is indeed calling us to, what the Lord is calling us to repent, what He wants us to let go of, and that we can take that step to say, okay, I'm not taking your mercy for granted, but I'm going to live in a certain way that people will know that I don't take your mercy for granted, I believe wholeheartedly that you love me, that you are leading me closer to yourself, and that you are calling me to lead all closer to you as well. So we open our hearts this Advent season, let the Lord um, into our hearts and be transformed and make that great commitment to change and live as living disciples, living symbols and witnesses to his gospel.